Thank you very much. Um, the, the, the first starting point, I suppose, is that all sorts of things are called master plans. Um, so um, there's, there's no, there is actually no uh, definition. Uh, but we, we sort of know when we see things that we don't think are, are quite right. Uh, and we see them in model form, and then we see them built. Uh, the thing on the right uh, in the distance is a, is a caravan park, but the, the housing development has been laid out on the same principles as a, a caravan park, really, uh, but maybe with not quite so much thought. Um, so we have an idea that, that master planning in some way is the part of the solution to this, um, but but quite exactly how, uh, we're not sure. Uh, without a master plan, our vision can never be achieved. Um, but that's the trouble with master plans, that it, the idea of, in, in a changing world, what, what we, you know, we have very few certainties. We, we don't know um, how we're going to be living, working, shopping, using our leisure in 30, 20, 10, next week. Um, you know, every, uh, and we're, we're planning for, for uncertainty. Uh, and somehow um, we need a, a system that's, that's flexible, that's going to provide uh, some direction, uh, but, 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 but without being inflexible. Uh, dodgy statistics. This is an official figure, actually. 63% of all master plans are a load of rubbish. Um, uh, and whenever I hear about a master plan, I always ask, you know, what happened to the previous master plan? And they always say, how did you know there's a previous master plan? But there always was a previous master plan, but conditions change, so they need a new one. And, uh, yeah, conditions change. That's the thing about conditions. They change. If, if they didn't, uh, planning would be really easy, um, and it wouldn't need really clever people like us. Um, here's the small print. Planning. Terms and conditions apply. So... We're trying to plan for, for changing uh, conditions, um, which means that the master plan has got to somehow be tailored for uh, the, the particular purpose rather than just a, a cut-and-paste job. Uh, but they all look the same, uh, not only in the layout um, of the, the design, but, but actually in the documents. So this is from One Size Fits All Associates. Uh, it looks very similar to this one by TaylorMade for Sight Associates. Um, and it, it, it takes a while to work out which is the one that's actually going to add value to what we're, what we're trying to do. Um, the Scottish Government has recently uh, published a, a, a master uh, a, a planning advice note um, on master planning. They're, they're equivalent of uh, um, uh, 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 English guidance. Uh, and, and I wrote it, so I know that actually it doesn't say very much really, except that sort of master plans are a good thing. Uh, and the, the Scottish Government didn't really want to go much further than that because it thought that if it, if it was really trying to be more specific um, and, to, and to define criteria, you know, what is a master plan, um, that that might discourage you know, house builders who, uh, do you remember house builders? Um, who were... Um, you know, the, the government is trying to persuade to you know, think about the, a particular site and there and not just go along with their, their standard house units. So they want to int introduce master planning um, gradually and get people signed up to the idea before uh, being very, um, you know, setting out a, a load of uh, uh, criteria. Um, but what we do need is, is examples. I mean, in Scotland, and I'm going to talk a fair bit about Scotland because. Uh, I'm working in Scotland a lot at the moment. Uh, you know, Scotland is the home of master planning, uh, Edinburgh Newtown, uh, and a master plan that actually got, got delivered. Um, uh, and as John said, um, Crown Street in, in Glasgow, you know, th there aren't many good master, new master plans in Scotland, but, but Crown Street uh, is one of them. Um, Delivery, of course, is, is, is the key. This was meant to be uh, a continuous boulevard, but the highway engineers uh, didn't like that idea, so they said, we'll have some bollards. And you can see they, they got out the catalogue and said, should we have the, the heritage bollards or the modernist <laughs> bollards? Uh, and they couldn't agree, so they, let's have both. So, so there you are, two sets of bollards um, to suit all tastes. Um, but I think we'll never put the, the cat back in the bag and say, 
you can only call a thing a master plan if it has some quality. You know, we have to accept that all sorts of things are going to be called master plans from things that uh, are based on excellent research and really good gives, good gives strategic guidance and things that are just uh, back of the envelope um, sketches graphicked up. Um, but I think whatever we, what we, we call these things uh, and if we don't worry about the, 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 the term, then, then that, that's all right. They'll be called master plans. But we still need to insist on the quality. And when we see one, or when we try to assess one, we need to say, you know, is this actually a, a good master plan, or is it a load of rubbish? Um, so I think we need to have some way of, of setting the gold standard for the planning and design process. And in a way, because everything is called master planning, you know, what we're talking about is the planning and design process. I think Thomas Sharp said uh, you know, decades ago, uh, you know, unless a, a plan actually has some, some drawings of, of what it's actually physically planning, it's, it's completely useless. Uh, so really we're talking about you know, plans that actually work, that have some effect. The, in Scotland, the, the, the Scottish Government, Architecture and Design Scotland, uh, amongst others, have, have set up uh, the, uh, the Scottish Renaissance Towns Initiative, which is trying to uh, lead by example and uh, create some, uh, some model master planning processes um, to show what master planning can be. The planning advice note says master planning is a good thing, but the idea of the Scottish Renaissance Towns Initiative is to say, well, this is maybe how we can do these master plans. Uh, and the, there's only one Scottish Renaissance town so far that's been uh, identified, but the hope is to identify two more fairly soon. Uh, and Urban Design Skills is uh, the, the urban design consultant to the, the initiative. Uh, and the first one, which is in Neilston, uh, this, is, this is the team, East Renfrewshire, the, uh, the District Council, the Neilston Development Trust, uh, the Regeneration Group, um, uh, Glasgow University, the, the, the Urban Lab at the McIntosh School of Architecture, uh, SUS, the sustainability arm of the, uh, the Lighthouse, uh, and the Scottish Government and Architecture and Design Scotland. Um, and the location of this uh, first Scottish Renaissance town, which you probably haven't heard of, is Neilston, uh, 15 miles outside Glasgow. Um, and if you haven't heard of it, that's because there's nothing particularly special about Neilston. It's, uh, that's it in Glasgow in the distance, and it's in a wonderful setting, um, but it's not a very special place. And that's the whole point, is trying to take a town that isn't very special, um, about 5,000 population, and, and to see what can be done uh, with such an average place. And of course, like all spe unspecial places, you know, the more you look at them, the more they turn out to be very special. Um, it's, a, it's a historic place, um, and it's, got a, it's originally a mill town, uh, and this is the old uh, mill, uh, which has a, 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 needs a coat of paint, um, but um, has a, is a vast amount of uh, space uh, and could be converted to um, a whole range of, of uses. So a lot of potential, that's the view from the, the window of the, of the mill, um, and it's got a high street, which is mainly, which is more street than, uh, than, than high. Actually, it's got a high street and a main street. This is, the main, this is main street, which is the high street, and it's also got a high street, which isn't the high street or the main street. It just leads to the station. Um, let's call it the high street. And mainly it's a street leading from Glasgow uh, outwards. It's, it doesn't really work as a, as a high street. Um, but it could do, uh, and that's part of the key <laughs> to, to making something uh, of, of, this, of this town. And it's got bits of development like this, which is like the that layout in that we saw in the model, uh, that, that could be anywhere, and the designer of it didn't need to know that it was in Neilston, that it was next to the mill, that it was on a hillside, and probably didn't know any of these things. Um, Neilston has a, an amazing um, uh, community that's very well organized, as a high level of uh, uh, community activity. Um, which is always ideally what you want and which doesn't exist in a lot of average small Scottish towns. Uh, for example, when the, the only bank in the town um, closed down, um, the, the local community bought the building 
if they'd waited a bit, they could have bought them back uh, and, uh, and turned it into a, a cafe. And uh, now the, 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 the very nice uh, bank building on the high street uh, is a, uh, a cafe and, and community centre. Uh, so there's a, a, a very, um, very well-organised, uh, uh, effective uh, community organisation, which is what you need to, uh, to make a really uh, exemplary uh, master planning process work. Um, and, and it can be it can be encouraged and obviously if it doesn't exist we need to promote it um, and it's part of the process of looking at the place understanding it understanding this ordinary place and seeing how extraordinary uh, and wonderful it is of looking at the strengths of the uh, the community and its various organizations looking at the buildings uh, which look sort of ordinary but are have a, an amazing history uh, and uh, amazing connections with the uh, the, 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 the story of this small Scottish town. Um, programs talk, getting people to talk about the, the history, to, to realize that the place they're living is somewhere special and not just a rather down at heel uh, uh, place that's becoming a suburb of, of, of Glasgow. Um, so the local community, as, as part of the planning process, has started uh, enjoying and, and celebrating uh, the, the place finding out uh, about it, taking to the streets, um, and doing projects, getting involved in the, in the planning, the master planning process. Um, and sometimes these things are done through charrettes where everybody gets um, uh, working together for, for, for a week and the idea is to have everyone in a, in a, in a, in a hothouse exchanging uh, understanding and information. This is a, this is a, a more drawn out process. Uh, but because it, it's been going on for a while and it's a, in a, it's a, it's a very rich process, there's no necess necessity to, to hurry it and to squash it all into a, a very short time. Um, but we had recently a, a two-day intensive weekend of bringing everything together to try and start uh, developing a, a charter. Uh, this is the urban design skills team. Uh, every one of them uh, recognized practitioners of the uh, uh, urban design group. I'll show you. Um, and uh, this was an intensive two days of, of talking and thinking and exchanging information with the necessary professionals in the room trying to uh, turn the, uh, the ideas and knowledge um, that's been built over weeks now of the, of the local community into uh, a master plan. Uh, and we'll come on to that, what that might mean. But just understanding how the place works, how it could work uh, potentially, what are its strengths and weaknesses, uh, connections, uh, open space, uh, routes, facilities, and, and what are the things that really people want to do and what, what is uh, uh, potentially could be uh, achieved. And then bringing the ideas together and starting to, uh, to draw things that make people, help people understand how the place could physically change. This is the, uh, the, the high street, um, thinking, well, the traffic can go through it, but it doesn't have to uh, say so strongly, this is a street, uh, keep off. It can be the heart of the, uh, the town. And if people are put off, uh, if, they, if they're not willing to uh, drive as slowly or as carefully uh, as, as that um, suggests, then there is another route. So um, uh, the, 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 the town can, can reclaim its high street. That's Neilston. Um, another one place we're working is in this, this town. Do you recognize it? Uh, the Scottish town of uh, Inverness, um, where Inverness is planning a, a big city plan, but which is really what you call a, a master plan, really. It's just trying to get to grips with this city that's been, it's Europe's fastest growing city um, until uh, a few months ago. It's probably uh, not growing very much at all, uh, but no doubt uh, it will uh, again. Uh, being heavily criticized for um, uh, uh, building a lot of uh, uh, badly designed, badly planned, um, uh, sprawling housing estates all around it. Um, and the council wants to uh, produce a big city plan, which is really a city-wide master plan, and they're trying to get to grips uh, with what that means. Um, traditionally, you get in some consultants to, 
to, to, to do your master plan, but they want, to, they want to try and make it come from the community itself and from the local authority uh, itself. Um, and if they don't have the master planning skills in the planning department, uh, they, want to, uh, they want to develop them themselves. Uh, and they're using uh, capacity check, uh, the, the urban design skills appraisal, appraisal method produced by um, uh, the, the Urban Design Alliance um, to, to look at the skills that they have um, and to see what they possess uh, and to see what skills they need to uh, either buy in or be trained in um, or to get from other, other agencies, uh, other, other sources uh, to, to be able to, to master plan uh, the town. Master plan. Um, what, what, it, what can a master plan be? Well, um, a lot of them, as I've said, are a complete waste of time and effort, uh, an incredible waste of time uh, and, uh, and money. Um, uh, but on the other hand, they can be very valuable. Um, and maybe at the best, what we sh should hope for is that a master plan can be, it's a bit long, a strategic guidance document that records the collaborative and multidisciplinary process of formulating planning and design principles relating to social, economic, and environmental aspects and three-dimensional physical form for a site or area and shows how these principles can be implemented. Um, but I think it's worth looking at that description. I mean, first of all, uh, a master plan is, is, a, is a document. Often we see a master plan which is presented and you realize that actually the master plan is a, a diagram of, of, of development. Um, but to me, it should be actually a document um, and, and it should be a strategic document. It's not just um, uh, giving some guidance on uh, to architects what to design. It's understanding the strategic concept, uh, context of the place. Um, but it's a document that, uh, that records a, uh, a process. Um, so actually, I think it's better to talk about master planning rather than master plans, which makes us think about diagrams. The master planning process, and it's the process uh, that we need to, to try and get right. And if we do get it right, that has value and it, it works. Uh, if, we, if, if we don't, then, then it probably doesn't. Um, and it's the, really the, the familiar the, the urban design process, it's the same process um, in, a, in, in any urban design uh, project. And here the, the master plan seen as the, the thing at the end where, where it all comes together. But inception thinking about, you know, what are we trying to achieve? The vision, or why does the vision come before the analysis? But in a way, you know, we start out with a vision, an idea of what we're trying to achieve, um, of you know, why are we doing this? Uh, and I think it's often worth thinking about that before you get down to the, the appraisals and, of analysis and then to understand the place, the strategic framework where it begins to come together, the design principles, um, the, 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 the options stage, the master plan, and of course delivery. If it's not deliverable, then it's, it's not a, a, a useful master plan. Back to the definition, this process, while it's a collaborative process, it, it involves uh, a lot of uh, uh, different, uh, it involves different stakeholders and, and the, the, the community. Um, it's a multidisciplinary process. It involves, it's not just done by one uh, very talented professional, whether an architect or a planner or anything else. It's actually uh, a team. Uh, and the, the quality of the process will be in how well they work together. Um, it's establishing design principles relating to social, economic, and environmental uh, aspects. Um, and three-dimensional physical form, um, again, which, which is something uh, that distinguishes uh, master planning from other sorts of planning. And not just three-dimensional, not just in that someone has, has drawn something that is in three dimensions, but that this means some thinking about what sort of three-dimensional form makes sense in that, in that context. And that takes design and, and thinking. Um, and, and it's about how the principles can be implemented, not just, uh, uh, not just uh, an idea uh, thrown off uh, that, that isn't practical. So if we want a, uh, you know, a set of criteria to, to assess the, 
the master planning process, then uh, that, uh, that definition um, would suggest these, these 10. So, you know, first of all, um, it's a process. Is it the full process? You know, is, does it go from inception to delivery, or is, is, is part of the process uh, uh, miss it, missed, uh, um, missing? Um, is it carefully recorded and well illustrated? You know, we need to look at the, uh, it's, the master plan is not just a, a diagram, it's recording the process. Uh, well, if it doesn't do that intelligently and clearly, then it's not very useful. Um, is, it, is it fully collaborative or is it just going through the motions? Uh, is it really multidisciplinary? Are there different disciplines working together? Is it creative? Has there really been some creative design input uh, or is it just uh, ticking the boxes, going through the processes, doing the, the perimeter blocks that, that, that the team always uh, des um, designs for, for any site, looking exactly the same? Um, <clears throat> has it been designed uh, with, with, in the, with, well, in response to the sustainability agenda, uh, an understanding of climate change, responding to climate change, reducing climate change? Uh, does it work in three dimensions? Is it for an area that's to be changed or developed, um, uh, or, or is it just a, a, a vague uh, strategic um, wish list for an area? Um, are, are the appraisals um, sound? Is it deliverable? All these things, the first thing to see is, you know, are, are these, are these uh, aspects of the process in place? Uh, and the second thing is to, to see, well, um, can we assess them to see, you know, what the, what the quality is, uh, what the quality of each stage of the process is. Uh, so, for example, um, at each stage of the process, there will be an equivalent stage of community engagement. You know, one of the aspects, the, um, uh, the the collaborative part of it, and it won't just be a collaborative stage, a stage where you do the community engagement, where you bring in the facilitators and you have a um, some event. Uh, there's actually uh, an appropriate um, activity and output of, of, of every stage in relation to community engagement. And again, if we seriously try to look at a master plan to see if it is likely to be an effective master plan, then we can see, first of all, um, you know, were these, you know, has it gone through this process, or you know, whatever process is, is appropriate. And again, the process has to be designed for the particular uh, uh, place and, and the purpose of the master plan. Uh, and then secondly, uh, what was the, the, the quality of, of what actually happened? Um, and it's not easy to to understand the quality, and you can't review the, the quality of these sort of things in a master plan quickly in a design review. You need to do some research. You may be need to have someone embedded in the process uh, looking, at the, looking at the quality, monitoring the quality uh, as it goes through. Uh, but if we're not willing to do that, then we're not really going to be in a position to say whether the master planning process is going to be valuable, if it's going to be effective, if we're getting uh, our, our money's worth, and if it's going to be worth uh, actually uh, backing because it's, it's, a, it's a real robust basic basis on which to, to plan. And we can also analyze the, the, the master plan in relation to you know, the, the physical form. Uh, and obviously, uh, again, this is a, a, a skilled uh, matter for uh, design review in various ways, uh, but to do it very simply for a starting point, we could, you know, think of things that uh, that we could draw diagrams of to to try and assess. We could draw diagrams to show the the structure, the microclimate, uh, the roots, the building lines, building heights, public space, dead frontage. There are a lot of complex things to analyze in terms of a design, but some of the things are very basic and actually we should say to whoever is producing the master plan or a, uh, a design nexus statement that uh, accompanies it, uh, actually you know, we want these very clear things um, set out. You know, show us the views, show us where the front doors are. I, I always find it a really good question to say, you know, look at a plan and say, where are the front doors? You know, draw them on, a little X for every front door. And when the architect says, 
Uh, the front doors, well, they're round the back. You think, well, that might be a, uh, a problem. Here, the, the front, this is the, the front door, uh, well, this is the back door on the front. Um, and, and, uh, and so again here, with some razor wire to, to, to keep, uh, uh, keep people out. Uh, but, you know, some aspects of the, the physical form shown in the master plan um, don't actually take a, a lot of analysis. They, they jump out at you if you actually draw a simple diagram or ask some simple questions. And I'm going to finish there with a, an inspirational slogan. Give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach him to fish and you feed him and his family for a lifetime. Teach him to plan and he'll wish he'd chosen the fish. Thank you. <laughs>